shall we begin this evening's program, Night of Remembrance for Dr. Emmanuel Evans Anform, an illustrious son of Osu Salem, in the name of God, who alone is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. We will sing Tai Ayehoa. Continue with PHB 282. We'll sing the first four stanzas. Ken Kleng Udasefoy Amumu.
shall we remain upstanding whilst we have a word of prayer? Our Lord God Almighty, let your presence manifest in this place. As we gather here to mourn our beloved Dr. Emmanuel Evans Anfom, may you bring healing into our hearts. Be our Alpha and Omega in this night of remembrance. Let the things we share about our beloved Dr. Emmanuel Evans Anfom bring joy and healing in our hearts. We know it will be hard for anyone to fill the gap that has been left in our hearts. But we also know that in the days, weeks, months, and years to come, you will heal us. And what we will be left with are the fond memories of the times we shared with Dr. Emmanuel Evans Amphon. Father, remind us as we gather for this memorial that none of us lives to himself and none of us dies to himself. We are yours, whether we are living in this life or whether we have passed into the life beyond. If we live, we live to the Lord. And if we die, we die to the Lord. Blessed are the dead who die in the Lord, for they rest from their labor. You give and you take away. We bless your name. We thank you for giving us a chance to spend time with Dr. Emmanuel Evans Amphom while he was on earth. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Please sit. Right Reverend Professor Emmanuel Mate, former moderator of the General Assembly of the Presbyterian Church of Ghana, Reverend Niteko Dadu, Osu District Minister of the Presbyterian Church of Ghana, Reverend Professor B.Y. Kwashi, Rector of Akrofi Chrysler Institute, Akrupong, Reverend Professor Seth Ayete, the clergy here present, His Lordship Justice Professor Ni Ashikoti, Justice of the Supreme Court of Ghana. The family members of Dr. Emmanuel Evans Amfrom, members of Usu Salem Old Boys Association, the media here present, beloved brothers and sisters, the peace of the Lord be with you all. I would like to welcome you all to this night of remembrance for Dr. Emmanuel Evans Amfron, an illustrious son of Osu Salem, who went to be with his savior on the 7th of April, 2021. To say that Dr. Evans Amfron was an icon in the Presbyterian Church, and particularly this church, Osu Ebenezer Presbyterian Congregation, is clearly an understatement. He was born and raised by Presbyterian parents and other family members. Dr. Evans Amfron was trained and educated in his formative years in Presbyterian institutions by Presbyterian trained teachers many of whom had first and basal mission training. No wonder he turned out to be a brilliant and hardworking student from childhood through medical school. His professional life was indelibly marked by diligence and honesty among many noble qualities. This seemed printed boldly on his forehead and chest as his badge of honor. Dr. Ivan Sanfron did most things so well, yet he was modest and very gentle in his manners 
and earn great respect and admiration from everyone, high and low. The late Dr. Emmanuel Evans Hamfron, the brilliant student of Usu Salem, Ashimota School, and Edinburgh, was the same polished but humble man in this church, OEPC. When he walked through the corridors of power as first class surgeon, a senior lecturer at the medical school or vice chancellor at the KNUST, and despite all other very high positions he's held in life, our beloved old man was still soft spoken. He was noble by royalty, but not he was no noble, not by royalty, but by high morals and ideals. He was charitable and honest, not only in this church, where he was a presbyter for 20 years from 1978 to 1998, during which time he served as a senior presbyter for eight years of those 20 years, but anywhere he found himself. That was Dr. Evans Amfro. And the man like him can never be forgotten. This is why we are here to remember him with great respect, admiration, and love as to prepare to say farewell to him. May his gentle and noble soul rest peacefully in the bosom of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. We continue our night of remembrance by singing from the Presbyterian hymn book number 287, the first three verses and the sixth verse, BHB 287, the first three verses and the sixth verse. Jatai Nidia Blima Bilemli.
biography of the late Osoba, Dr. Emmanuel Evans Amphrey. See how the death of God's saints is so peaceful. For they are in the arms of Christ the Lord. Death. Christ destroyed forever by his own death. Therefore, death cannot frighten when it comes. The flesh shall die and turn to dust. The soul shall live eternal. No corruption see. Presbyterian hymnal number 504, the third stanza. The late Emmanuel Evans Amphon was born on October 7, 1919 at the Evans Family House, High Street, Accra. His parents brought a blessed memory where William Kwashi Amphon of Accra and Mary Emma Evans who became Mary Emma Amphon daughter of William Timothy Evans, a well-known catechist of the Basel Mission Church. His maternal grandfather was at one time the headmaster of the famous Basel Mission Church, church school at Osu, otherwise known as Osu Salem. Emmanuel Evans Amphon, together with one of his cousins, Willie, started elementary education in January 1925 at the Government Junior Boys School in Jamestown. In January 1928, Emmanuel was promoted to the Government Senior Boys School at Roe Road. He secured a place at Standard 3 at the Presbyterian Primary School, Osu, in 1930. Together with, with his brother, Joseph, they had moved from Accra to Osu because their parents had decided to start laying the foundation of discipline and character, or character building, and therefore were moved into the Basel Mission non Presbyterian atmosphere. In this school, one was introduced to the dignity of labor and to the growing of vegetables, which helped the pupils to become familiar with the use of their hands and not looking on agriculture as a punishment, but rather as a worthwhile occupation. They were also made to memorize important passages from the Bible and the Gun, hymn book. He continued at the Basel Mission Middle Boys Boarding School, Usu Salem, which has the pride of place for being the first middle school to be established by the Basel Mission. In his autobiography to the Thirsty Land, Dr. Evans Amphon writes that as I look back now, I can safely say that it was at Osu that the foundation of my character were well and truly laid. The Christian tradition at Osu really helped to mold my character. He recounted vividly and with nostalgia his period at Osu, and most especially at Osu Salem, his Odonkokronkron Jimmy experience, the affable, hard-working staff. He also recounts playing the harmonium among others while at Salem. He was indeed very, very, very proud of Osu Salem 
and remained so until his death. He won a scholarship while at Osusalem to the Atumontan College, where he was admitted to Form 3 on the second Friday of January 1935. While some of his colleague newcomers found it tough settling down at Achimota, Emmanuel said, coming from the Teutonic regime of a Presbyterian school, that is Osusalem, and having endured four years of the Spartan system, he took everything done to them as a child's play. One of his famous sayings much later in life while talking about his days at Achimota is that as compared to the strict puritanical training of the years at Osusalem, he had the feeling of a chicken who had been tied up and now let loose and given free reign. He was very active in student activities at Achimota College. He became a house prefect and developed special interest in hockey. He was awarded medical scholarship during the latter part of 1939 and early 1940 and passed the MB examinations of London University in the year 1941. He taught science briefly at Achimota during World War II before traveling to Edinburgh University to train as a medical officer. His leadership skills came to the fore as he became the president of the student Christian movement at the university and captained the combined Scottish University's hockey team, which won many victories. He finally graduated as a doctor on July 15, 1947. He continued with a postgraduate diploma course in tropical medicine and hygiene, completing in March 1948. Dr. Emmanuel Evans Amphon had a distinguished working career he had his internship at Dewsbury General Infirmary in Yorkshire and served at the following stations Kolebu, Dunkwa Onofin, Takwa, Kumasi, Sekendi Takrade, and Tamale Hospitals. Additionally, he held many important positions locally and internationally. He was at one time the Vice Chancellor of the University of Science and Technology, Chairman, West Africa Examinations Council, the first Chairman of the Council of the Center for Scientific Research into Plant Medicine, Mampong Equapim, President, Ghana Academy of Arts and Sciences, President and Life Member of the Ghana Medical Association, President, West African College of Surgeons, a fellow of the Royal College of Surgeons, Edinburgh. He was also Commissioner for Education and Culture in the SMC regime under Akufu. He became the Commissioner for Education and Health in the AFRC regime, two different sectors. Chairman, National Council for Higher Education. He was a member of the Council of State in the Third Republic. And he was also one time the chairman of the Ghana Hockey Association. Outside of his work, Emmanuel or Dr. Amphon was a passionate and practical Christian who loved to evangelize. 
he served on so many committees in the church notable among them were the interchurch and the communicable relations committee of the presbyterian church of ghana where he was the chairman president of the ghana boys brigade council chairman of Acrofi Crystal Memorial Center for Mission Research. He was also a lay preacher, a, pre a presbyter, and senior presbyter of Osu Eben Ezra Congregation of the Presbyterian Church of Ghana. He won many awards, including the Edinburgh University Alumnus of the Year 19. 96 and the Ghana Sports Writers Association Past Heroes Award in 1979. Dr. Emmanuel Evans Amphrey is survived by a wife, Mrs. Ellis Evans Amphrey, and four children, Neokai, Rahel, Niteko, and Charles and many more sympathizers to celebrate his life to Dr. Emmanuel Amphon we say thank you for sharing your life with us and for influencing so many people positively may you truly rest in perfect peace Amen Now praise we great and famous men. Amazing grace him now. Four, nine, five.
Yeah, it's okay. Tribute by Yosoba to an illustrious son, brother, uncle, and mentor. Dr. Emmanuel Evans Amphon was one of us. A desirable essence of citizenship is needed today. And we, the alumni of Susalem, Presbyterian Middle Boys Boarding School, Osoba, declare that this essence can only be distilled from the life experiences of a personality like Dr. Evans Anthem, whom we mourn today. In life, Dr. Evans Anthem represented boldly the ideals of our alma mater about the love of God for humanity, country, character, and nursing the qualities of honor and the self-discipline that go together to make the good citizen. The love and reach for academic excellence were also Dr. Ivan Sanform's strong pursuits, besides being a staunch Presbyterian. The result was that very few in the history of Ghana can truthfully say that they came out of an elementary school better or more equipped for success than Dr. Evans Amphon. Dr. Evans Amphon, the iconic personality we mourn today, was an Osoba, an alumnus who, with every minute of his existence, created more declaratory examples of the life of the Ghanaian as a good citizen of the world. We are proud to have known him as a fellow alumni and citizen. We love him while in life, and we will certainly miss and mourn him after death. Yes, we will never forget him. Nor will we forget the old Presbyterian values of hard work, the holistic training in discipline, and perseverance that forge the sundry acumen that prepared him for the future triumphs. The highly competitive work ahead at Achibota, then at the University of Edinburgh, and ultimately on graduation and appointment as a doctor with the Gold Coast Medical Services starting 1950. At the Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology, there were doubts about his administrative skills when he was appointed the vice chancellor, yet he excelled. It was the solemn character at work, said Senior Ebenezer Amate Akwete, class of 51, a retired diplomat about Dr. Ivan Sanfom, class of 34. Until he passed, Dr. Ivan Sanfom was our most senior alumnus, our best, and all the hallmarks of his once illustrious school called Osu Salem, established by the Basel missionaries in 1843, were personified in him. He was born in 1919, decades before any in our current alumni. Many of our seniors today arrive at Osu Salem to find Dr. Ivan Sanfom's academic and character excellence already established and inscribed on the scholarship board that hung at the assembly hall of the school. It would not be an understatement to note that many on first citing the name on the board were inspired. And from then on, Dr. Ivan Sanfom became the legendary figure that urged later Osobans on to success. His progress through life was a stellar. As a student, citizen, a distinguished scholar, surgeon, scientist, sportsman, educationist, administrator, former vice chancellor of KNUST, and author of the book, to the testy land. In 1996, 
The Edinburgh University alumni gave Dr. Ivan Sanform the Eliminus of the Year Award. To cap his outstanding contributions as a humanitarian, scholar, scientist, and administrator. Dr. Ivan Sanform's massive reputation had grown at every stage and turn in life. But as an alumnus of Usu Salem, he never ceased to be the father figure, big brother, and mentor that he was to many. His support for school and church continued. And even at the late age of 97, when it came to the drive to renovate the old school, Usu Salem, his leadership and help were pivotal as he taught earnestly above all, showing energy level and resource inputs that many half his age could not match or reach. Writing the foreword to his book, To the Testy Land, the late Professor Alexander A. Kwapon, Vice Chancellor of the University of Ghana, Legon, had this to say. His lifetime has spanned the heyday and the end of colonial Gokus. For Evans Anform has indeed touched the lives of many in this country and abroad in the course of his long and distinguished life. The late Mr. K.B. Asante, writer and diplomat, also wrote, Dr. Emmanuel Evans Amphom is a seminal figure in Ghana and his biography is an essential reading for those who want to understand how colonial Gold Coast turned into modern Ghana and what the future holds. Those who have or cared to read to the testy land will know the above statements as truth but they will still feel cheated if they never met the man Evans I'm from. We of Osoba knew him and are proud to let the world know that even in death, Dr. Evans I'm from still stands as our towering example of the historical good citizen and the spirit that Osu Salem produced. As Theodore Roosevelt, the 26th president of America, once said about a good citizen, that in doing his work, he shall show not only the capacity for steady self-help, but also self-respecting regards for the rights of others. For generations to come, Dr. Emmanuel Ivan Sanform will remain as one of our few best citizens and statesmen. May the ancestors keep him in perfect bliss from now on. The much decorated, honored, distinguished, and acclaimed surgeon and lover of music was our brother and son of Osoba. For all this, we thank the good Lord and may Dr. Emmanuel Evans and from so rest in perfect peace. Yahweh Jubang, Yahweh Nunchole Pokwami, Amen. I pay this tribute in the memory of a distinguished personality, Dr. Emmanuel Evans Amphom. To me, he was a friend, a father, mentor, and role model. On April 7th, Three days after celebrating Easter, remembering the resurrection of our Savior and Lord Jesus Christ, our cherished and respected Father 
friend, mentor, and role model, Dr. Ivan Sanfom slept with his fathers. This is an Old Testament expression meaning dying as his fathers or ancestors did. Another Old Testament expression summarizing the stewardship of these fathers, especially the kings. And indeed, Dr. Amphom could be regarded as a king in his own right. Their life testimony was summarized in two ways. Either being good in the sight of God or evil in the sight of God. Very short tributes. In our tributes to Dr. Evans Amphom today, if those tributes should be short, as we find in the Old Testament, we will simply say, he did what was right in our eyes, and he did what was right in the sight of God. The rest of this tribute, therefore, is intended to provide evidence and justification in support of that statement. And I believe when all the other tributes, including the life history that has been read, all of that have been put together, that evidence will be overwhelming revealing God's bountiful grace received and wisely used by Dr. Emmanuel Evans and from serving others. These tributes, I believe, also paint a portrait of an illustrious, exemplary and godly life in memory of Dr. Evans and from and to the glory of God. Soon after celebrating his 80th birthday, Uncle Ima as some of us refer to him being part of the family, embarked on a project to pen down his own life story in a book to the Thirsty Land, a title that captures his mission in life, based on the Achimota School prayer, commissioning graduates to become living water to a Thirsty Land. Knowing, not knowing how many more years he will have, Dr. Anfon decided to pen down what God has enabled him to achieve and to be a blessing to the many thirsty ones, the needy ones, and especially those in his motherland, Ghana. That inspired God-assigned purpose was fueled by an unquenchable passion to not only serve, but also to achieve much in, life, in his lifetime. And he accomplished much for God and for country in the several fields, including sports, health, education, science and technology, and in the church. The foundation upon which he achieved so much was the acquisition of Christ-like character, a priceless treasure he was endowed with at the Osu Presbyterian Salem, school, Salem Middle Boys Boarding School. Excellence was a hallmark of Uncle Ima, Mediocrity was not in his life vocabulary, being a God-fearing man with character and with unalloyed principles. I was privileged to be close to him through my dad, Mr. Joe Aiti, who was his classmate, bosom friend, and confidant, and with whom he was closer than a brother. Several times, the Amphons visited our house at Osu known as Elizabeth Liam. We exchange visits often. As students at Salem, the old boys' annual visitations to the school in their blazers and white trousers inspired us greatly. Dr. Amphom took very special interest in me. He followed me all the way to my PhD studies in the University of Cambridge, visiting me on occasions. Whenever he was in London, he also invited me for meals with him and his first wife, Auntie Leonora. On the 28th of May, 1978, when our second daughter, Mary, was being birthed at Mill Road Hospital in Cambridge, Uncle Yima paid a surprising visit and a memorable visit as such, 
welcoming our second daughter. Much earlier in 1972, a team of medical students I was leading to Kumasi for a funeral for a dear colleague was involved in a train derailment accident. Thankfully, none of us was hurt in that near tragic event. We carefully crawled out of the derailed coach, walked along the rail line to a nearby village, boarded a vehicle to Kumasi, and headed straight to the residence of Dr. Evans Amphom, then Vice Chancellor of the Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology. But I asked the driver, take us straight to the residence of the Vice Chancellor, because I knew my father was there and he would look after us very well. When Antilio heard I was at the door, she asked the security to let us in. And there we were. Four young men in dirty clothes. When he heard our story, Dr. Evans Amphon called from his office to greet me and then left us in the capable and gracious hands of Antilio. Sure enough, our clothes were promptly landed and we had a nice hot meal after which we were driven to the funeral grounds. All of us, including Clifford Newboy Tego, appreciated that exceptional hospitality. For me, it was a family matter. I was home with my father and mother. How proud I felt about that. That was how close we were as a family, including special love for my sister Josephine and others. For Josephine was served breakfast every morning while she was at Accra Girls High School by the Amphoms. Thank you very much. In 1985, when I was a special ministerial student assigned to the Osu Ebenezer Presbyterian Church with the Reverend E.S. Matekojo as district minister, I served on a committee to determine how best the Presbyterian Church could use its vast human resource with Dr. Amphom as chairman. That committee formulated the idea of a guild of professionals and recommended a review of the church membership card to include professional expertise and tied to be paid on a monthly basis, among others. For reasons you might well guess, the recommendation that information of professional career of members be included in the membership card was not accepted. I believe tied paid might not match the professional status. Working with his 1934 Osusalem classmates, Dr. Amphom contributed immensely towards the building of a new pulpit in which I, as a minister, had preached quite a few times. And in the acquisition of a Hammond's organ, he and others also helped with the paneling of the ceiling of the sanctuary and with the building of a manse for the church. Dr. Amphom was never late for church services. Immaculately dressed in suit and tie, he and Uncle Ari Sawyer and Mr. Adote will sit among the others. I believe Amphom sat right here and Uncle Ari there. Their elegant and monumental posture portrayed their statesmanship, maturity, decency, authority, integrity, honor, and discipline. Their presence was felt by all and restrained improper behavior. These much treasured life qualities made them out as distinguished personalities and role models to many of us. How many of such stalwarts, stalwarts who epitomize decency, integrity, being sought and light, can we find in our country today and from whom younger generations can learn? Uncle Yima was blessed with a very fine mind a mind younger than one can find even in 50-year-old individuals. At 100, he was able to accurately and brilliantly articulate and share ideas from his vast store of knowledge and experience of events. Again, at 100, he granted a lengthy interview to GBC, something many, including myself, will shy away from. 
Even at 101, he was still intellectually active, sharp, and engaging. Uncle Yemen's life fitted what the psalmist wrote. The righteous will flourish like a palm tree. They will grow like cedar of Lebanon, planted in the house of the Lord. They will flourish in the cause of our God. They will still bear fruit in old age. They will stay fresh and green. Psalm 92, 12 to 14. Being one of the few remaining of his generation, Uncle Yiman's departure means the baton has been handed over to us. The best tribute I believe we or anyone can pay him and the generation of our fathers is first to emulate them. Second, we should seek to excel them. Third, we should work hard to fulfill their dreams and aspirations. For Uncle Ima, as I believe it was for several others of his generation, the preservation and modernization of Salem was priority. May we all therefore rise to build. May the Presbyterian Church of Ghana recognize the great heritage in that monumental institution as a major historic site, invaluable to the church and to the state. And may government too invest hugely in Osusalem and all other such institutions which are priceless in laying solid foundations of character, nation building values that Emmanuel Evans Anfam recognized, treasured, and espoused. Finally, let us all remember that Dr. Evans Anfam is not dead. He is only asleep in Christ. On the day of resurrection, he will be raised together with all who have believed in Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and Savior. To end on a lighter note, his dear friend and younger colleague, Professor Phyllis Konoti Angunu, on hearing the news of his departure, wrote to me saying, Hallelujah. He had breakfast this morning with the risen Lord Jesus Christ. Easter was 5th April, and Emmanuel Evans Amphon's flight departed at 7 a.m. on the 7th of April in time for breakfast with the Lord. Also, shortly before Uncle Ime's departure, my special friend, the Reverend Dr. Chris Hesse, administered to him the Lord's Supper, Ni Ehe Yesu Eye. That was what he needed before saying farewell to the family, to us, and to Ghana. May the soul of Uncle Ima, and the souls of all the faithful departed, rest in peace. And to Auntie Elise, Nyokai, um, Charlie, and uh, um, Niteko and Rachel, the Lord himself comfort you. Amen. And in remembrance of our father and former president of the Boys Brigade, the Brigade brand would want to show our love with a short musical interlude, very short one.
tribute from the boys brigade to our father former president Dr. Emmanuel Evans Amfo. We have an uncle that keeps the soul. Surface and sure while the billows rule. Fasten to the rock which cannot move. Grounded, firm, and deep in the Savior's love. In recent times, we know that Dr. Emmanuel Evans Amfo was not in good health. But his passing still came as a shock to us. We were not ready to part with such a gift from God to the Boys Brigade Ghana, who served with discipline simplicity and humility. Your love for the Boys Brigade leaves an indelible imprint in our memories. Dr. Emmanuel Evans Amfo, you served as a president from 1988 to 1992. Was a true blessing to the Boys Brigade Ghana and all her affiliates, Dr. Evans Amfo, imparted the lives of many through his role as a physician, scholar, university administrator, and second vice chancellor of the Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology. He is a personality who had interest in children and youth ministry, hence very passionate about the Boys' Brigade and its development. His tenure saw separation in the performance of role between the national organizer and the national secretary. The review of the Boys' Brigade constitution and the changing of annual elections for the various positions to a defined term, among others. Words cannot express the sorrow and sadness we feel for you, our former president. His sacrifice, his being for the brigade, was thoughtful and will therefore live on in our hearts forever. What the brigade once shared with you can never be lost because they have become part of us. We are grateful to God that you fulfilled your destiny and may your good soul rest in perfect peace. Amen. Tribute to the late Dr. Emmanuel Evans Anfo by the Presbyterian Church of Ghana, Ebenezer Congregation, Usu. I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though may die, yet shall live. And whosoever lives and believes in me shall never die. John 11, 25 to 26. When great souls die, the air around us becomes light, real, and sterile. We break briefly, our eyes briefly see with a hateful clarity. Source, when great trees fall by Maya Angelou. 
Today, we pay tribute to a significant and an illustrious member of our congregation with deep sorrow, but with the sure hope of the resurrection and gratitude to the Almighty God for his life. The late Dr. Emmanuel Evans Ampho lived in Osu as a young boy, attended the Pre Osu Presbyterian Boys Boarding School, Salem, from 1930 to 1934, during which he had the proverbial Presbyterian training and education based on values of discipline, hard work, perseverance, integrity, among others. Dr. Emmanuel Evans Ampo was confirmed into the Presbyterian Church in his final year at Osu Salem and registered as a full member of the Osu Ebenezer Presbyterian Church in June 1934 by the late Reverend Joletu, the minister in charge at the time. The biblical test given to young Emmanuel Evans Ampho at his confirmation was, therefore, I charge you to rekindle the gift that God has given you through the laying of my hands on you. Second Timothy chapter one, verse six. Considering some of the elements of this gift from scripture, such as abiding faith, leadership, ministering or service and discipline within the context of Dr. Anfon's life, we find his confirmation test rather prophetic. Throughout his life, as we had known it, whether as a medical doctor, university administrator, a very high profile servant, a church member or an ordinary citizen, Dr. Amphum was a man committed to honest and faithful service. He exemplified quality leadership and in everything he did. He was a teacher, mentor, and a great but modest gentleman. From infancy until his demise, he remained close to the Presbyterian Church of Ghana. He was a staunch member of the Osu Ebenezer Presbyterian Congregation and served in several capacities at the local, district, and national levels of the church. At OEPC, he served on a number of boards as chairman or trustee on important committees of the church. Dr. Amphon was the first chairman of the Ebenezer Scholarship Fund and served the church so well for 20 years. He carried out his responsibilities with vim and vigor always and was never tired. He held the same leadership positions on the Ebenezer Awards Committee, the Health and Welfare Committees, as well as the Choir Board. And whenever the need arose, our revered father and leader did not hesitate to support committee work with his own resources. Dr. Evans Amphon was a presbyter at Osu Ebenezer for 20 long years, that is 1978 to 1998. At that time, there was no tenure and therefore one can serve as long as he was elected and for as long as his strength could carry him. Dr. Amphon was not only a presbyter for 20 years, but also served as the senior presbyter for eight years. He was known to be very punctual and well prepared for all meetings and spoke with deep knowledge of the church's rules, regulations, and practice. 
Dr. Evans Anfield dealt with issues with profound wisdom and understanding of human nature. Often, he easily drew from his wide professional experience useful examples to guide deliberations. His team at the congregational session at the time included some seasoned administrators and financial experts in the civil, public, and private sectors, and many others who, through zeal, hard work, sacrifice, devotion, brought development to the Presbyterian Church and helped modernize the management structure, systems, and operations of the church for more effective ministry. His other achievements and legacies with his team included the terrazzo works of the chapel floor, the completion of the church hall, the chapel rehabilitation project, and the successful celebration of the centenary anniversary of the Usu Ebenezer congregation. The late Dr. Emmanuel Evans Amphon's church life and services were more of social outsense of the church. No doubt his exemplary church life, actions and contributions touched the lives of many members of the congregation, irrespective of their generation. His immeasurable service and contributions to the Osu Ebenezer congregation were duly recognized and honored with an Ebenezer Gold Award at the end of his tenure as a presbyter in 1998. Indeed, the modern history of the Osu Ebenezer congregation and that of the Osu district of the Presbyterian Church of Ghana will not be complete without the contributions of Dr. Emmanuel Evans Ampho. He exhibited same qualities of enlightened vision, drive, diligence, and dedication at the national level, where he provided useful services to the Interchurch and Ecumenical Relations Committee, among others of the Presbyterian Church of Ghana. We have indeed lost an illustrious man who, despite his advanced age of 101 years, continued to live up to his church obligations and also donated generously to the Ebenezer Scholarship Award, Ebenezer Scholarship Fund. This is a great loss indeed, but what can we say? We cannot contend with the giver of life, neither can Christians with hope in Christ and his resurrection lament and mourn like people without faith and hope in such circumstances. As written in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 14 to 17, and I read, For since we believe that Jesus died and rose again, in the same way God will bring with him those who have fallen asleep through Jesus. For we say this to you by a revelation from the Lord. We who are still alive at the Lord's coming will certainly have no advantage over those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the archangel's voice, and with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then those who are still alive will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and also we will also be with the Lord, unquote. We remain thankful to the Almighty God for the work he used Dr. Emmanuel Evans Anfon to do in the Presbyterian Church as a whole, and more especially, the Osu Ebenezer congregation. So we meet again on that glorious day. May the Almighty God 
who is the resurrection and the life. Receive with open arms in his, receive you, sorry, with his open arms in his bosom. May your gentle soul rest in perfect peace in the arms of the Lord. Amen. We shall continue by singing Aging H 306, verse 1, 2, and 6. scripture reading is taken from Philippians chapter 2 verses 1 to 11. Philippians chapter 2 verses 1 to 11. And I'm reading from the New King James Version. Therefore, if there is any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any affection and mercy, Fulfill my joy by being like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord, of one mind. Let nothing be done through selfish ambition or conceit. But in lowliness of mind, let each esteem others better than himself. Let each of you look out not only for his own interest, but also for the interest of others. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who, being in the form of God, did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a bond servant and coming in the likeness of men. And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death even the death of the cross. Therefore God also has highly exalted him and given him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, of those in heaven and of those on earth and of those under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus is Lord to the glory of God to the Father. Amen. Walk back and any can you more? Obana have Philippi be our loo. You train you. Kaja clan clan cuckoo. Cassino Nijin Maka Ecomia. Philippi be our loo. You train you. Kaja clan clan cuckoo. Cassino Nijin Maka Ecomia. Near all one more you motu. 
No you want like a Christo me he wala woko ye. Kaso mo misha ako ye. Kamu mo na nyobo ako ye. Kamu sun chole. Kamu mo na le ko ye le. Nye ha mi misha le ayia obon. Ake. Nye mi nje no kome. Nye hiye sun mo kome. Susu ma kome. Mo mo kome. Nye nye ka fia noko. Kamu ngbila mo mo mo. Lo yaka anu nyamta mo. Chimong. Nye ka he shiba jwe mo abu anye na nye me ake ame fenye. Nye te mo fe mo aka fo enomli. Chimbong, efu ena nye nomli. Nye kristo yesu hu jwe enle. No nong nye jwe ya. Le mo ni hiye nye mo su mong. Chi ebu ukbo. Ni eka nye mo yele ake. No koni sa ake e hiye mli. Peng. Mong. E jye efo shin. E ngo chula su efu eno. E chopo mo. Ni eni fi emo gbe fwa hon, anale ake gbo mo. Eba e shi e botu e kate e gbele mi, kate e se mo chono gbele mi, ntete. Ene wwa hon ni nyo mwa wo eno gojo. Ne dro la gbe, ni ta gbe e fe e gbe e no. Koni me eni yo wen, kame eni yo ase pon le no, kame eni yo ase pon le shi shi le. Ate mo fe e mo, na kucho akwa si, ye yesu gbe e le mi. Ni li la fe, li la e akba mi, po, ake, yesu kristo di nun cho. Ke wo che, nyo mwa le hiye nyam, nyo mwa yue mwa ne. Wo cha, wo jamo ono. Ke wo ni fe mwa ni ano. Ke pres mi lala. Ko ha e nyo mwa. Ke ejwe, ke ke kuku ji ejwe. We continue with presenting him 504. First three verses. Me anu nyam ke kristo tobi o cho ke kwa lo kwa kwa le mwa nyo kwa no. Chin le kwa kwa pe se kwa le no. Fe yesu tobi ni e la le no. No ni je fe kwa nye aha. No ke ni to ne ke e kwa lo papa. Na.
Beloved in the Lord, the peace of the Lord be with you all. I did not attend Usu Salim. I attended the Presby Boys Boarding School in Ebury. But I'm highly honored to be part of this celebration of Dr. Ivan Samkhon's life. I suspect that I was asked to share the word of God with you on this occasion because my father happened to have studied together with him in Edinburgh. And then, of course, he was the founding chairman of the board of trustees of what we know today as the Akrofi Crystalline Institute of Theology, Mission and Culture a solid foundation that he laid, leading to the institute becoming one of the first three private tertiary institutions in Ghana to be given presidential charter to award their own degrees. We thank God for his life and our deepest condolences to the family. Beloved, I've chosen to share with you a few thoughts on the theme for others. For others. For others. Let us pray. Lord, speak to me that I may speak in living echoes of your tomb. Amen. The Apostle Paul established the Philippian church in about AD 48 49. And then later, he was imprisoned and had the opportunity to write to them. He always had excellent relations with the Philippian church. But when he wrote to them, it was to encourage them to live out their Christian faith. And in our passage, he calls upon them to pursue and maintain and live out they are Christian faith in terms of unity and humility. Unity and humility. Unity of mind, unity in terms of values, unity of purpose, all in the context of humility. In Paul's view, it was only in unity and humility that the church could flourish, could grow, develop, and fulfill the mandate that Christ had given to it. And it is obvious that these same elements of unity and humility would be needed by any group any organization, indeed any nation that desires to grow and flourish. Beloved in the Lord, it is this call to unity and humility that Paul unpacks in this passage for us in terms of the values and the qualities that ultimately demand that every Christian, every believer should place the interest of others above his or her own interests. Mbafo Palo, Inkai, Filipi, Asafue, Ake, Eko, Mefe, Moke, Hishiba, Hehiya, Nibi fe mie sani neke nibi na jiku ni sui ni jo minke ba hu afi fan ya mesi le mi ake Kristo fui ni kaji kuko asafuko manko ba shiri e be he ni ake eko me fe mo pe hisiba a jiku fan ye amesati and so the apostle Paul makes it very clear. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or conceit. 
count others more significant than yourself. Don't look out for only your own interest, but the interest of others. In effect, any time you begin to think about your own interest, remember the interest of others. Never consider your own interest in isolation. Babapalo Manomi, Ake, Wate Mokaka, Noko, in Kumin Famu, Nani Mana, Nani Min Tawa, in Hai, no Susu, Me, Koko, Me, Ahi, Yamoni, Chibefa, the Nano Badu, and Noko, Kaham Buden, Chor here, Okai, Unyemi, Unanyu, Yamoni. Beloved in the Lord. So Paul's call for unity and humility is essentially a call to live for others rather than for self. To live for others rather than for self. And he proceeds to present to us in this passage Jesus Christ himself as an exemplar. Jesus Christ, being God, nevertheless was prepared to put aside the privileges, the power that he has as God so that for the sake of others, for your sake and for my sake, you would become a human being like us. He gave up his interest as God for the sake of others. He became a human being. He became a servant. The pre-existent one became incarnate, not for himself, but for others. For others in obedience, he went to death, even death on the cross. That was what his father demanded of him. Not for himself, but for others. For you and for me. God raised him up from the dead. Not for the sake of Jesus Christ, but for our sake. He ascended into heaven for our sake. To affirm for us that in this life, we live in the presence of God and this life is never one that comes to an end at the point of death. That is the assurance that Paul gives us in reminding us of what God did in the life of Jesus Christ. No Timmy Jom in Diaka, she won his Wahan Melcoco me. Was she in Lafe, your Melcoco, and I won. Jay or Denche, Noni or Tau. They care yes to Christo Marshiak and for Ninka Hau. Monation or no criminal papa, Miss Sani Walker Boo or he, no Walker Bawaji. I care yes to Christo and young money. She had been a Ebafo <laughs> Beloved, Jesus 
demonstrated to us, as Paul reminds us, that in everything that Jesus did, he did it for the sake of others. In humility, and in that humility, he demonstrated selflessness for the sake of others, not himself. He demonstrated a sacrificial disposition, gave up his life for the sake of others. Beloved, this is what Paul invites the Philippians to live up to, to demonstrate day in and day out in their lives. And I can imagine us wondering how this is possible. And we say that the example that he gives us of Jesus Christ is feasible because Jesus was God. So he had the capacity to do what he did. Beloved, we are gathered here tonight celebrating the life of Dr. Emmanuel Ivan Samson. And when we look at his life, It's a life that reminds us that truly it is possible to follow the example of Jesus Christ articulated here by the Apostle Paul. It is not impossible. Those who are in Christ are empowered to follow the example that Christ has set for us. In essence, the Christian faith demands that we live for others, not for ourselves. And that was the life that Dr. Ivan Sanfon lived. Returning from Edinburgh, he was prepared to go and work in rural areas of this country. Up to today, we have headaches. Doctors trained here in Ghana, not those who have been trained abroad and experienced, you know, if you like, a better lifestyle. When they are posted to rural areas, they won't go. Dr. Ivan Sanfon, for the sake of others, was prepared to go to these rural areas and say, you can imagine the difference between Edinburgh and Tapa at the time. And yet, he was prepared to do it for the sake of others. Today, not only doctors, but many others are living abroad, professionals, greener pastures, thinking about themselves and not about others. The way that Dr. Ivan Sampon demonstrated to us, reminding us that the example Christ set for us is an example that we can follow if we remain anchored in Jesus Christ. Many of the headaches we have as a country today arise out of selfishness, selfish ambition and conceit. All the bribery and corruption we keep lamenting about, the indiscipline on our roads, the destruction of the environment in the name of Galamse, the desire to make money at all costs is all centered on self. What I want for myself, how it impacts others doesn't matter to me. How it impacts the wider society, how it impacts the country, is none of my business. For others, that is what we are called to as followers of Jesus Christ. That is the example he has set for us, my dear Christian friends. And that we may be selfless, think about others, make sacrifices for the sake of others, that is our calling. 
And Jesus did it, not simply because he was the son of God, but he assures us that if we remain in him, we can also follow his example. And the life of Dr. Ivan Sanfon demonstrates that. Yemen has no use to Christum. Come on, come on, come on. Papa ni Christ we see how of Akaka and Ele one young Wafi Beme Kajiwo. Go back your wallet. Naka, you see a ham and Kokumi. Jack and Offen on me of Aka was an old boy to two, you know, van Iam. No, no tower or hall he. No genoni, me pi petroni. She called a Dr. Ivan Sanfon, Wala, a year who does a fine accession. Obanye, Wafi, noni, yes, to Christrick, Hewaka, Wafi, and any farm or hey, Obanye, one year, say. Ni waji yen kumi mfa mumo ya wa shin le mi. Ni noni kristo. E shin ha wa ke nokono no papa. Ke wa on hi shin ye mi. Ni wa on mebe kone mo konkon a atuni yo mi. Boni Dr. Ivan Sanfun mebe. Wa hun wa ba anye wa ke wa hi a fon shi. Wa ke wa hi a shan fo le. Ye me koko me a hi wo. Wa na ba e pi ni ya na yo ma ne mi ye. In kome mfa mumo. No me eje, no ni mi mana. Ni wo bu me koko me hi akonta. Kaji galam se na fi oni ejiu. Kaji nyoni hamo ke he mo ejiu. Kaji wangu waku kwa no muzi ejiu. Kaji choni kudoloi ame niye basa basa niye. Fe mi yo ya e join le pe. Sina kai mumo. A kekwe ma na hi, a kekwe ku na hi. Ni bafo fa lo nkha e wa ke. Wame ni wakaya wa yoye kristo miye. Sani. Wajie ne kwenko mi infa mwone e wa sati. Ni wakaya wa hi afon si. Aha me koko me. Wakaya wa hi asan fole. Aha me koko me. Mboni Dr. Ivan San from Fiye. So beloved in the Lord. I end my exhortation borrowing from a colleague and a friend who happens to be representing the international academic community on the current council of the Akrofi Crystal Institute, Professor Deji Aiboin of the University of Ibadan. He grew up here in Ghana, went to secondary school here in Ghana, studied at the University of Ghana. And when he heard the news about the passing of Dr. Ivan Sanfon, he shared a few thoughts with us. And that is what I wish to conclude my exhortation on. I'm quoting him with a few amendments. Wow, the great, great, great Baba. I met him, I met with him personally on two occasions. Evidently, he was a very down to earth and extremely pleasant man. The first time I met with him, it was at the KNUST administrative block. He was the vice chancellor, and he saw me on the corridors. You know what? I was selling ball pens. Instead of chasing me away, he asked whether I was a student somewhere, and I said yes. I told him I was a student at Amas. He asked me to work hard so that I would come and study at KNUST. Unlike many heads of institutions would have done, he paid for half a dozen big barrels 
and asked a young man to collect the pens and pleaded with me to keep the change. I will never forget this scene. In the concluding remark, and this captures for me what I've been saying, Dr. Evans Amphum was a real epitome of humility and Christ likeness. Dr. Ivan Sanfum was a rare epitome of humility and self and Christ likeness. Beloved in the Lord, this is the testimony of a colleague that underscores the fact that Dr. Ivan Sanfum lived for others. In humility, he served others, not himself. And he was not only selfless, he was also ready to make sacrifices for the sake of others. Osu Salem Old Boys Association are honoring him tonight. And as has been attested, he saw the education he got at Usu Salem as pivotal for the rest of his life. It's been said very often how he effortlessly moved from the medical field into education. I believe that the training he got at Usu Salem led him to a deep appreciation of the importance of education for life. So he moved on into education, I believe, seeking to advance the same values that had meant so much to him from his days at Usu Salem. So we are left with a mission to educate, to nurture, to bring up our younger ones in a manner that will instill in them these great values of humility and Christ-likeness. Those are the values that will take them very far. And indeed, I dare say, the values that will help us build our nation and prove to be patriots the way that Dr. Ivan Sanfon was. May he rest in peace. Amen. Congregation, let us rise to affirm our faith in the Lord. In whom do you believe? Please sit. Let us bring our offerings unto the Lord. We ask the brigade band to lead in this gesture.
congregation, uh, Reverend Dr. Professor, Professor Ayete is asking that we permit him to live for his residence. Dodua, Dodua, sorry, Dodua. Prof, permission is granted. Have a safe journey.
ni fa ni hani wojo a afole ya no dro lo ke mabo na leche o yira don baba o nun cha yesu o ka he o ye wo anokwa ololo won tabushin ke ha wo nyiminu mo he wo ni wona e ba pesi e bi ene nun cho wo je wo happy ana wo ke ba o hie bona fe ni ongo ni ochuhe ni akechuni wala mancha won pabo fai ni fe ni akeba chuke boni akeba chule aha hani esa o hie nun cho ka he ni oje opua wo yo bi wo nun cho yesu christo bai amlen wo bi o enene amen wabala PHB 4 BHB 4 PHB 4 in ali lay a Please, you can sit down. Dear brothers and sisters, on behalf of Osu Salem Old Boys Association and the Presbyterian Church of Ghana, Ebenezer Congregation Osu, and all of you present here, I would like to call upon a representative of Dr. Evans Amfron's family to come forward and receive the offertory just we have just made for them to for them to use in their funeral arrangements. I hope it will be a blessing for them to continue so that we all pray with them to have a successful funeral for our late Dr. Evans Anthony. Amen. On behalf of the family of the late Dr. Evans Anthony, I'd like to thank all of you for giving us this to help us with our funeral. As you know, outside his home, this was probably his second home. And so we're very happy to have had this occasion for you to help us. Thank you. Our closing hymn is AGH 81. We'll sing the first three stanzas. Members of Osoba, you are supposed to meet at the auditorium right after this gathering. PH AGH 81, one, two, three. Mm. Yes. <laughs>
shida wo ije mo kanfo mo ke agboje wo kan o ata na nyungo ye o dro mo ke o mo bona le ko no ji o cho wo ye gbaga na shi wo he na bua mo ye bie ni wo ke shida ahabo ye o chulo nu emmanuel evans anfo osoba Seto ni esiwo Yehova wo nyembo siwo da ejake wo bie ne ba wo bomo che ke wo mumo fe no ewo ni wo nye wo le bonu wo dabo siwo ha si no ni keke ni wo ke o ji ake ha ni wo no ni wo bakase ye bie ne no no ba nu ye bi ene no ni akele wo gbomo te ye bi ene afa nwa ni ba hi wo mi wo walagun abofin bene afa ni wo nye ni wo ke wa koni wo mangana adamo shi ye enaji ano eku o so fo nu kwai eh eh ni me wudi ni e ba bi ene wo ye supreme court judge po ye wo tin ye bi e la lo ke me fe ni ba ni am ba kwe ni fe mo ne i se wo nke ake yehuwa nyu mo die nche ajo onye si da ni ji eten wo ke ha Many to Guadiano, Kehani Femone Osu Ebenezer Presbyterian Church session Ke Osoba Niji Salem Old Boys Eka wo Dr. Evans Anfong Trino Ake Waka Mwe Salem Nutumori you have won. We try to make it. Osoba. 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 Yehuwa, you go. Aye, Abu Awo. Kunu wanye wafe na kani. Wabi ane mengo ko menguni fatahi ni ameha no fiano ete no jobandi wala le aku menguni ba sha sha ni biye ke agwene. Boys and Girls Brigade. One Kai Ake. Nyeha. Wa yo manye. Ye wa ni fe mo mi. No ni wa bi wa keke ji ake. Ye ho wa nyo mo. Mo ni ji wa fe wa yicho. Mo ni le. Eke wa ba. He ni wa tra ne. Ni le. Eke wa ba si biye ne. Eke ya he ni wa je. E dro mo. Ke jo mo. A ni wa fe wa no. Mwe ne. Keda, Amen. Me bi la la ete shi me nyama mi da. this song almost every morning to glorify God. We are so grateful to God for giving him to us. Actually, 
the old man who is our father started feasting with the Lord on Palm Sunday that is a joyful thing and on that Palm Sunday he and the family and a team of pastors from Osio Benezer and elders went to the house with Dr. Uh, Professor Marty present to celebrate the Lord's Supper with him. We are so grateful that on the 7th, after having another feast with the Lord, he joined his Lord. We thank God and bless God for his life. Thank God for the celebration of this great man. Let us pray. Father, we thank you. You are the God of all wisdom. You are the God of all knowledge. Counseling and understanding belongs to you. We cannot question your knowledge and we cannot question your doings. We thank you that you gave our Father to us. And through his life, we have learned a lot. We thank you for his family and we pray that, Lord, you continue to strengthen his family. Let all who have strong relationship with him Always when they remember our dear father, Uncle Emmanuel, Ivan Sanfu, let them remember that he walked with the Lord, he talked with the Lord, and the appointed time God called him to his bosom. May his life be an example to all of us, and may we live to glorify God to honor him. We ask this in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Now, go in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, the only one who has the power to give life to everyone. May we associate with him and may we receive life. For as many as believe in him, to them gave you the power to become children of God. May this be our portion. Now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all, now and forevermore. Amen. God bless you all. Yeah, what